Okay, welcome. Glad y'all are here. Today we're going to be talking about constructing our root system and um, being a tree of righteousness. But first we have to chop out some bad trees. And John the Baptist said we must take the axe to the root of the tree, which means if you've got a faulty root system, it's going to be very difficult for you to move into the best that God has for you. And so today we're going to talk about the root of bondage. Ugh. So our scripture in Romans 8:15 says, So you have not received... A spirit that makes you fearful, mm -hmm. that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. To me, that's such a comfort that we can call the God of the, of the whole universe Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. He is our Heavenly Father. So bondage is composed of anything that would bind or fasten or keep us in shackles. Ooh, you stop and think about that. We don't want that in for our life. And ultimately, it throws you into slavery. Mm -hmm. If you're in shackles, you're not going to be free. And bondage in the scripture literally means servanthood, servanthood slavery, are the state of man which he is stopped from freely possessing and enjoying his life. And it's a place opposite of liberty. Mm -hmm. And so when the Lord sets us free, he wants us to enjoy our life, to enjoy the presence of God. So we have to choose. Do I want to be free or do I want to stay in my bondage? And so there's three main ways that the enemy would come in to bring bondage. And according to 1 John 2, it's the lust of the flesh, uh-oh, uh, the lust of the eyes, or that pride, that boastful pride that we think we're something when actually we're not anything without him. And so today we're going to talk about that. Um, the enemy does his best to put us into bondage. And when we accept a quick fix, that's probably not a good thing. And so what we do is we have to say, this makes me feel good, but it is in your best interest. I don't know. Only you can determine that. So 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know all things that are freely given to us. So our Father God, does not want us in bondage. He wants us set free in every area of our life. And so when I learn how to cooperate with the Lord, and it is a process, you, every day you have to choose, I'm gonna cooperate with the Lord. Then I have discovered throughout my years that it's my Father's pleasure to give me good things. He wants to bless us, but you have to position yourself to where he can. And one of those things is learning to wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't like to wait. <laughs> I want to get things done. But you know what? God wants us to learn to depend on Him. And I've determined, for instance, for my home, I liked old things, antiques. And so some things I inherited, some things I bought at auction years ago. I was sharing with Catherine when we were redoing my kitchen table. It was the first object, the first piece of furniture I bought after Bob and I got married. And we went to this auction and they said $100 and I did that half, I want $50. And I ended up buying my oak table with claw and ball feet for $50, 48 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it has done me well and it was starting to come to the pl and it's been refinished once and so uh, it was starting to look pretty bad and so I had this great idea I said Catherine let's just paint it 
So that's what we did. And I rather mostly Catherine painted it, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, that was a treasure to me. And I debated, do I want to get rid of it? And I thought, no, I don't want to get rid of it. God gave me this wonderful oak table and I've had it for a long time and it's still good. There's nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. except it needs an, a kind of an update. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? It's God's good pleasure to bless us. And my husband was just could not believe I drug him off to an auction and we were not married very long. That was things to come. He had no clue. <laughs> but I want a deal. I don't want to pay a whole lot. That's why I love our thrift shop because you can get the best stuff there at hardly anything. Why would anybody pay full prices when you can get good things? God wants to bless you. Ladies, be very wise. What little bit of money you have, you pray and believe God and he will take care of all the rest. Amen. He'll take care of all the rest. Now, when you see someone that's caught up in the very throes of sin, uh, you can know they've been taken captive against their will. Mm -hmm. The powers of darkness have moved in, and it always astounds me they come to the food pantry for food with tattoos. What is that? I'm not opposed to you having a tattoo if that's what you want, but they cost money. And they're smoking. Right. So that costs money. And now they're wanting food. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with this picture here? Right. I want to preach them a little sermonette and say, you know what? You need to be a better steward over your finances. Right. You don't go somewhere if you can't afford to do that. Are you following me? Yes. But, but you know what? They don't understand. Right. They're caught in that snare of bondage. And so we have to work out that we're not caught there. That we don't spend our money foolishly instead of allowing God to show us what we need to do. So the first sign that tells us we're caught in that root system of bondage and it will keep us from being a tree of righteousness is that fear and anguish of spirit always accompanies it. Now we've already talked about fear in last session, but this is what it said in Exodus 6. Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They became too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. So the anguish of spirit had so consumed them, they could not even hear that good word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when you have anguish of spirit, there is an impatience with others a shortness with others. You really don't want to go there. And if you become easily discouraged, you're grieved with dealing with people, or you loathe being around to someone, you, you, gotta, you gotta chop that, that thing right. out of you. Right. Because bondage has is, is got a root system in there that you're gonna have to take the acts of the Holy Ghost and you're gonna have to chop that thing out. And so I wonder, now here's how you can tell. If a family member or a friend tries to speak into your life and you brush them off, you might be acting like the Israelites did when Moses talked to them. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you're impatient with them. You don't want to hear what they got to say. And the reason is you've got a shackle around you. Mm -hmm. You've got some bondage. So you got to whack that thing out of there. Get rid of it. The second thing is, bondage will fuel uncleanness and greed. Mm. That you want more and more stuff. Mm. You know, somewhere you have to be content. Mm -hmm. And so, the rule that I try to bring in, if I bring one thing into my house, I have to take two things out. Boy, that'll kind of nip that thing. You, bring, you go and buy one piece of clothing, you got to donate two. And you know you need to be doing that anyway because we get too much junk. I mean, and only in America do we have stuff upon stuff. And so it's a constant purging. It's a constant cleaning. And I, when my father 
uh, we had to go in and take care of his things, we carried out garbage bags mm -hmm. full of stuff. He had all of these um, get-rich-quick schemes that he got in the mail. You know, send me $200 and we'll send you a million. And it would be wrapped in, in there would be all of that trash and then there would be a title to a something. And I'm thinking, why were all those things not sorted out? So we have to take charge of our life because that uncleanness and that greed grabs a hold of you and before you realize it, your life is in disarray. And your life is no longer precious because it's gotten cluttered up with all kinds of stuff. So ladies, you don't want to let that bondage take you over. Be very wise. The third thing is that bondage brings about addictions and compulsory sin. Wow. Now, these compulsory sins can be from nicotine, alcohol, drugs, illicit, illicit sex, whatever, okay? But those cravings do not begin as a huge cord of sin. They start with unbridled thoughts. Right. You allow your thought life just to go crazy. And before long, you get involved in it. Not too long ago, um, came up on my time hop where Larry Clint King was interviewing Billy Graham. No, it wasn't Larry King. It was uh, Woody Allen. And so as he was interviewing him, of course, Woody personified bondage. Mm -hmm. And so he said, um, well, Billy Graham, do you have any um, vices? And he said, yes, I drink coffee. And I've read that that's really not that much too good for you. And, and, and I thought, boy, he was, you couldn't trip up Billy right. Graham. I mean, he was quick, right. but he was very, you know, so for years I would say my vice was Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. And I've been endeavoring to stop my Dr. Peppery because it's not good for me. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you only know what is that vice you have. Now, if you have cigarettes and alcohol and drugs, obviously that's not good for you because when you go to the doctor, one of the first things they're going to ask you, do you do any of these things? That's a no-brainer. And so, ladies, if we're going to be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he might be glorified, that means we have to address anything that would be bondage. And I'll just, we eat too much. This week, we, we ate way too much because we had a guest in the house. Today, I'm not going to eat hardly anything because you know what? I, I feel bloated. And so you have to take charge of your life. You have to do that. I have to do that for me. Um, and so I have to bring my thoughts captive to the Lord Jesus and not allow it to get into areas of compulsory things. I don't want to destroy my destiny. I want to be very clear with God. What do you want me to do? And I want to run my race well, okay? And so, um, for instance, if a man likes to drink alcoholic beverages, uh, it will grip them until their talents, their abilities, the God-given potential that was on the inside of them is held captive. What is that? That's that bondage, that spirit of bondage that's keeping them from being who God's called them to be. The fourth thing that we see is another sign that bondage is at work is that we are bruised and broken in our inner person. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, sometimes when you're growing up, you have hateful things spoken to you, done to you. And um, what ha as a result, your strength diminishes. You're not able to, to press in to receive everything that God has for you. And if you don't give them to the Lord Jesus, they provide a fertile ground for bondage. If you were ab abused as a child, verbally, physically, sexually, in any area, there's a bruise on the inside, and we have to learn to give it to the Lord and let Him heal us on the inside. And we have to forgive those that have done despicable things to us, and we don't want to forgive them. We want to smack them 
But you know what? God says we have to forgive those. Why? So that we can be blessed. And then He will deal with them. Every child, and you hear me say this a lot, needs to be affirmed and allowed to mature at their own pace. Everybody has their own place. And if you've been uh, wounded by words that were spoken over you, you have to then counteract that damage. If you were told, and I shared this with you, how my dad always told me I wasn't pretty. My sister was pretty, but I wasn't pretty. And when you compare children, that doesn't ever work. And so you have to come to the place that you, you want all of your children, all of the children that are in your sphere of influence to be affirmed and that you're proud of them and that you want them to succeed. You don't want to give them place where they have to then deal with shackles on them because of your mouth. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So what do we want to do? We want to pray for others. Right. We want to believe God, not be so critical and judgmental and speak words of affirmation and love to them. The fifth thing is that bondage allows a root of bitterness to flourish inside us. Oh my. And bitterness... It's a cruel taskmaster. When bad things happen to us, we either become bitter and we form bitter root judgments where we say, I'll get even. I'll make you pay. What is that? That is a bitter root judgment. And unfortunately, um, God wants to cause that situation. We give it to him and we become better. And I, I was interesting when I was writing this years ago that if we hold on to that injustice or that horrible act, we set in motion more to come on us because there's laws in the spirit realm. Um, if you sow seeds of bitterness, you're going to reap them in ways you never could imagine. In physics, this is called for every action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. In chemistry, it is said every equation or formula must balance. In the Bible, it says, for whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So you see, God has laws in place, whether it's physics, chemistry, spiritual laws that work. And we can't violate them. We're going to have to learn to cooperate. And if you'll just take the book mm -hmm. and do what it says, you'll save yourself tons of heartache. Yes. Tons of heartache. So I, I found out that if we judge another's defect, it's going to come back on us. Mm -hmm. And somebody else is going to judge us. So you say, you're stupid. Well, it won't be long. Somebody gonna come and tell you you're just you. You're not playing with the full deck, are you? <laughs> so we set in in motion that, and so we gotta stop that cycle. We gotta take the axe and chop out that bondage that's trying to manifest in our life. Okay. Um, for instance, if a man judges his mother, then what happens is. He reaps a bitter root judgment back into the life of his wife or his children. Mm. I always heard that you can tell who will be a good husband how they treat their mother. If they love and honor their mother, they'll make a good husband. But if they have bitter root judgments toward their mother, it manifests... That's a good thing that girls are not married. See how they treat their mother. And, and you'll find out there, there's some stuff going on there. It's a spiritual law. Okay, we got to hurry. The sixth thing is bondage produces a lifestyle of denying the truth. That's good. We just don't want to walk in truth. Um, denial occurs anytime we refuse to accept and walk in truth when it is presented to us. And there is a tendency when someone speaks the truth in love to us, we don't want to hear it. Then we go find somebody else that we can talk to. 
and then they'll speak the truth. Oh, I don't want to hear that. So then we go find ourselves another person. Mm -hmm. We're just wasting our day. That's not productive for the kingdom. And it seems that some individuals prefer to deny the facts rather than suffer the embarrassment of saying, you're right, I need to change, guilty as charged. And I'll tell you, God cannot give us mercy until we admit it. Right. And you've heard me tell the story, maybe you have, maybe you have. I'll tell it. Years ago, I drove a Crown Victoria. And those cars can get up and go. That's why the police used to, that's all they would drive. Mm -hmm. And I was coming into town, and I was praying in the Spirit, and I was driving and I was no more paying attention to how fast I was going than nothing. And I and 787 is a clear shot and I mean, I'm just barreling down. And um, a troop, uh, not a trooper, um, I, I don't remember what he was. Anyway, he pulled in behind me and turned his lights on and I'm oblivious. I'm just praying and I'm... <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> And you know what they do is they, uh, they turn on their loudspeaker system if you don't listen to the lights. Well, by the time that happened, I'm coming into the city limits and there's not really a good place to pull over. And so, you know, I hit the brakes through gravel. <laughs> Glory be to God. And um, so when he comes up, he said, Lady, do you know how fast you were traveling? I said, no, sir, I don't, but I'm sure you do. And I said, but I just want to tell you right now, thank you, because you are a minister of righteousness, and I have sinned. <laughs> and I want to ask you to forgive me and go ahead and give me my ticket. I mean, I just, because what was going through my brain, there's probably been 10 people in the church go by. <laughs> and see me and they've already called Bob <laughs> and I'm busted so the best thing is not deny it just go ahead embrace it do what you got to do okay so then when I get to the church Bob's here and so I just went ahead and have you heard what happened to me no what happened I said oh well I got caught speeding he said good I hope they throw the book at you <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much so it's time to go to court so I go to city court, and when I walk up, the officer that was there, he said, Miss White, what are you doing here? I said, I got a ticket. He said, who gave you a ticket? <laughs> See, if you have a good name, <laughs> if you walk in integrity, right. sometimes you'll have grace. That's right. And he said, give me that. And I said, okay. So I walked in. I'm just standing there because the place is full. And he walks up behind the bench, and, and Judge Taft was our city judge. And uh, he gave it to him, and he looks up, and he looks back down. I went, oh, dear. So I go up there, and he said, Ms. White, who gave you this ticket? I see this name here. What happened? I said, Judge, I'm guilty. He said, don't say that. I said, but I am. But I am guilty. He said, don't say that. I said, what do I say? He said, tell me you would be happy to take driver's ed online. I said, yes, sir. I would be happy to take driver's ed. And he said, I'm not going to give you a ticket. You're going to do that and you're going to bring it back to me. I'm going to give you mercy today. Well, I come back and Bob said, how much did they throw it at you? And I said, actually, they told me. <laughs> now, why am I sharing this? I didn't deny the truth. Right. Amen. I was guilty. And I told him, you're doing the right thing. I mean, I was not paying attention. I was praying, but I wasn't watching. Now, I have forced myself since then to use cruise control because I know me. I know my tendency is to go too fast. So what I do when I leave my house, I, as soon as I get on 787, come into town, I put it on cruise control. Then I can pray and not be concerned about the police pulling in behind me and having to do everything possible to stop me. Are you following me? Yeah. You know where you would mess up. So allow the Holy Spirit to show you so that you don't do it again. Because you do it again, you won't get mercy, probably. You might. 
but, okay. but but the odds are you probably won't okay so you have to say I want a lifestyle of enjoying truth mm -hmm. I want truth I want to embrace truth that's building a tree of righteousness but when you when you deny truth and you get mad at people that tell you the truth oh you're in bondage you're in bondage and so what we've got to do is we've got to be set free. The seventh thing is that bondage causes a lifestyle of immorality and possibly unnatural sexual desires. Oh, this is rampant in our world today. Mm. So sad. Homosexuality, lesbianism, unnatural sexual unions is fostered in the flesh because of bondage and it stems from inordinate affection, which are lust that dishonor those who indulge in them. In the Greek language, it means a passion of the flesh, which has been wounded, hurt, or suffering. In addition, pornographic material and videos feed that. And, and, and so if you know somebody and you care about somebody that is having a real struggle in this area, this is what you pray. You bind up that right. spirit of bondage on them. That's why I'm teaching you this. You use this in your prayer closet. You bind up that spirit of bondage on them so that they can be set free. Because I've noticed that when a man or woman has been wounded and their eye gate has been violated by seeing all kinds of stuff, then they will move in an area that's not God. And it's two hurting people trying to live together and call this love. Right. Their wounds are on the inside. That bondage has taken them. The next thing is bondage includes ambitious power and control. They want to control people with any way they can. I tell you what, we're living in now in a nation where we're being controlled on every side. And it's a spirit that has taken over our land. And it also causes us not to be content with where we are in life. I mean, there comes a point where you say, I am content. And I'm not interested in having more power, more authority. I'm not interested in telling people what to do. But our government, that's where we are now. Right. I know Prophet Ed was telling me last night he was supposed to have flown out this morning to Canada to minister, but he couldn't do it because of the, the United States government has now said that when you come back in to the States, two-week quarantine. So that's preventing him from going and being a blessing. Right. It's just stopping. It's throttling the world and so we need to pray saints that God will give us a way to escape we want to be having um, true liberty that only comes from Jesus the ninth thing is that bondage has a spiritual blindness about it um, when we become stagnant and we're happy and where we are we alienate ourselves from the presence of God you don't want to ever uh, be content with where you are spiritually you want to be content with your physical. You know that you don't have to have more clothes. You don't have to have more stuff. But spiritually, you're always wanting God to move. You don't want to be what the scripture calls dull of hearing. If you're caught in an addiction or bondage and you're ignorant of the blessings of God and it opens the door for destruction to come in. The Lutheran education said, seems like people who know the least know it mighty fluently. <laughs> I think that's probably the truth. <laughs> that's good, yeah. that's good. Brother Hagen used to say, it's ignorance gone to seed. <laughs> we just get so caught up in our foolishness and we think we've said it enough that it's true. Mm -hmm. So when if we become, um, we're not teachable and we're not tender before the Lord, our heart becomes hardened. And we cannot receive truth. And that's a sad place. And the door is open for more bondage. The tenth thing that we see about this root is it causes us to covet others' things. And that's sad, isn't it? 
It's a, a desire that can never be satisfied. And there's a tendency for self-indulgence, wanting more possessions, more money, more position. It's always more, more, more. The um, C.S. Lewis was an incredible man. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I want to be in his classes in heaven. And his books for children, the, the Chronicles of Narnia, were just outstanding. And in the voyage of the Dawn Treader, Edmund saw a gold bracelet and he slipped it on his wrist. But then what he didn't realize is that bondage was going to come over him and he turned into a dragon. Edmund did. And so what was easy to put on his wrist, that gold treasure, he saw all of this treasure. He wanted that gold. He put it on. And you know what it does to you? It strangles you. Mm -hmm. And so when the children, they saw the, the dragon, and the dragon is crying, and you can see the gold bracelet, and finally they figured out, that's it. What happened to you? Mm -hmm. That's what happens to the bondage. What you first allow, and it's easy to put the gold bracelet on your wrist. Mm -hmm. But then that thing magnifies. And so um, I always appreciated that. And I can remember when Braden and I were watching that movie. And I think that was the last. They had three of them that the, um, his sons, his stepsons produced. And they showed it at the Texan. And afterwards, I was talking to Braden. And I said, Braden, what happened to Edmund? He said, oh, he wanted the gold. Yes, he did. He didn't want to pay for the gold. He wanted it and he took it, but it was a snare to him. And so what we have to do is we have to be so wise that we don't want anything like that. We don't want to covet what someone else has. You don't know the price they right. paid to get that. Right. And for you to take it? Mm -hmm. See, that's what's wrong with our society now. There's a segment of society that says, if you have something, well, you have to give it to me. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's just as wrong as it can be. It's just as wrong as Edmund going in the cave and getting the gold bracelet and putting it on his arm. Mm -hmm. It will become a snare to you. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is bondage usually ends in satanic captivity and open heresy. Anytime we're not willing to receive and walk in sound, godly counsel, the door is opened for deception to come into our life. And it's like cords that's wrapped around. And one of the things I, I pray about all the time, I bind up deception because deception is running rampant through our world today. People are deceived on every side. And so I bind it. Lord, help us that we'll not be a deceived people because I promise you, the enemy is trying to put his cords around us and absolutely squeeze the life out of us. Yeah. And so deception is, is a very sad situation, especially now. And if you're involved in horoscopes, mm -hmm. that, that is crazy. Tarot cards, palm reading, mm -hmm. graphic pornography, mm -hmm. following a psychic. You're sending a message to an evil spirit. Come on, give me some stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's not harmless activity. It's demonic. Right. And we have to see it for what it is. It's designed to ensnare you mm -hmm. in the cords of bondage. And it opens the door for more and more demonic activity in your life. God gives us many ways to escape from the snare of the enemy. And when we pray for someone, we need to pray that, that they will be receptive to receive the Word of God. We have to choose to say, yes, sir, I want everything you have for me. Mm -hmm. And even if it seems like, well, no, I want to hear it, you probably need it. Just be humble-minded enough to admit it. I sinned. I messed up. I want to be free. Thank you for helping me. 
And I'll tell you what, God will open up the windows of heaven and bless you more than you could ever imagine because you're, you're being honest and upright before the Lord. Okay, does this help you? Amen. This is a corrupt root system that we have to constantly war against to see God move. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We give you glory. We thank you for your word, sir. We thank you for the power of God being present on the inside of us to deliver us and set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.